There are grading systems for IVH, uh, one, two, three, and four, one being the most mild, as four being the worst. Um, personally, I do not like this intraventricular grading system because it was based on um, ultrasound techniques from decades ago, based upon what we now know is the underlying process. Um, but because these grading systems will be used in the NICU, I'll, I'll review it here. Grade one is bleeds that are just within the germinal matrix. So they're not actually extending out into the ventricles, they're just contained within that germinal matrix. So technically, not really in the brain, I do not care in terms of functional issues. Grade two means that bleed went out into the ventricles, but there were not enough blood in terms of volume to actually physically expand the size of the ventricles. You can imagine if I have a lot of blood, it's physically like a water balloon filling out a, um, a, uh, a balloon if you put water into it. It, it. That same process can happen if you put blood into the ventricles. So grade two is that you have blood in the ventricles, but not enough to actually cause expansion in the size of the ventricular system. Grade three, therefore, means I have blood in the ventricles and it is enough to cause an expansion, and so you have what we call ventricular megaly. And then grade four is a term that I probably think is a little bit antiquated and confusing in, um, at, in this day and age because we understand that most of them were not actually originally from the ventricle, but they were actually in the white matter adjacent to the ventricle and they bled into the ventricle. Or you can see a venous hemorrhagic infarction and an IVH in the same image, in the same infant, and so then they get labeled as a grade four. So this creates some confusion, I think, in terms of the use of the terminology, even for healthcare providers, which then creates some confusion for the patient, um, at, depending on who is explaining the IVH uh, to the family. Um, since grade one, two, and even three, technically is not in the brain tissue itself, they may all go on to have very good prognosis. The ones that are actually involving the brain itself is when I get personally worried about having brain impact in terms of long-term consequences. Grade four, because they are actually directly starting within the brain or actually involving the brain itself, obviously have brain injury. If they're large in size, then you will have definite functional impacts and it may persist throughout their life. If you have a grade three that so severely enlarge the ventricles that you're compressing the adjacent and not just compressing but actually damaging it from how um, much it's been compressed, then you actually again have direct injury to the brain itself and then that will go on to give you functional uh, effects. Hydrocephalus, uh, which is um, not water on the brain, but water within the brain, is the spinal fluid actually being trapped within that ventricular system. So blood is very sticky and sort of like hair will clog up this plumbing system within the brain at these narrow points connecting the ventricles and can occur after IVH, particularly um, with um, IVH involving blood in the ventricular system, so like grade two, three, or four, and um, typically usually with larger amounts of blood in the ventricular system. Um, and when that happens, the fluid, which is constantly made, being made, may not drain at all or not as well, and thereby resulting in further enlargement of the ventricular system. And the way our ventricles are made, they're more elastic towards the back of our head than towards the front, so that the brain that is more likely to be squished and therefore damaged as that ventricles get bigger from the trapped spinal fluid is actually towards the back. Therefore, babies who have um, intraventricular hemorrhage that go on to develop hydrocephalus, their brain problems tend to involve vision in terms of being able to track and uh, fixate appropriately as well as motor function in the legs because of the telephone wires. The legs are towards the back, unlike the arms, which are more towards the front. If you have a grade four IVH, meaning direct injury and hemorrhage within the brain itself, then de again, depending on that location um, within the brain of the, for the injury, as well as the size, then you're predicting functional deficits in those respective regions.